Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it will be posted to our website in our archives for you to watch um, at any time at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our archived recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. Um, this would be similar to your state library, possibly. So we provide services um, and resources to all types of libraries in the state. So we have um, shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, uh, corrections, museums, archives, uh, really anything and everything. Our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries. We do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of stuff. Uh, we have Nebraska Library Commission staff that come on the show sometimes uh, to talk about things we're doing here through the commission or just to present things from here. Um, and we also bring in guest speakers. Uh, sometimes and from all across the country and that's what we have actually we have a mixture of that today <laughs> um, it is also the last Wednesday of the month so that means it is pretty sweet tech day yay <laughs> um, every month on the last Wednesday of the month Amanda Sweet is a, who is our technology innovation librarian good morning Amanda good morning she comes on to share um, something tech related with us. Uh, we sometimes have other shows on techie things, but you can always guarantee that the last Wednesday of the month will always be something tech focused uh, from Amanda. And she has actually brought on um, with us today, um, Sarah, who's from Tech Girls, and uh, she's gonna tell us all about that. Um, so I'm not sure how you all want to do this, Amanda start or Sarah, or what's, what the plan is, but. <laughs> It's um, all Sarah. She's got this covered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, all so, I, so, how did you all get all connected with doing this? Actually, yeah, So, I actually I heard about Tech Girls through a conference that I went to. It was either the Internet Librarian or the Computers and Libraries Conference. Might have been mm -hmm. both. And yeah. you know, <laughs> so I found out about it through there. And then I was like, cool, awesome. I signed up for the mailing list and I've been tracking it for a while. And then I got an email from Sarah or about like some of the services and what's available. And she asked if I had any questions. And I was like, you know, as it happens, I do. <laughs> you know? So here we are. <laughs> Yes, and so, I got the answers, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. got all the answers. Best way to get all your questions answered about Tech Girls. Awesome. Yeah. Right. Okay. So Sarah, go ahead and tell us all about um, what yes. it is. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm super excited to talk with everyone about Tech Girls, and if you've never heard of us, I'm going to answer all your questions, hopefully today, um, and hopefully uh, get you involved in some way with your library. So let's get started. So, we will have time at the end for q and A. I I will try to cover like all my bases, of course, but you know, questions come up, uh, you could definitely put them in the chat and we can address them maybe sporadically or, you know, towards the end is always a good one too, so. All right, so who am I? I am Sarah Neiman. I am a senior specialist at CompTIA Spark, which I'll talk about how we're related in the Tech Girls um, arena. I am an experienced educator. I taught for about eight years. I taught history and civics education and all the in-between at the middle school level um, in the Chicagoland area. So I definitely have a strong passion for education and ed tech. And I specifically work with volunteers, but specifically organizations that want to bring our program um, to their organization. Um, and I really work nationally. So any organization, nonprofit, school, uh, anybody that's an organization qualifies uh, to work with me. And I also manage our teen advisory board, which is a current membership of 55 members which i'll talk about later what they are um, and how they are involved with us so that's just a little bit about me 
So who are we? Tech Girls is actually a nonprofit program of CompTIA Spark. Um, we really want to help middle school girls, so fifth through eighth grade, to explore the possibilities of technology and really let them explore all the possible careers that could be within that bubble. And we really create a fun, interactive way. They're called tech shops, which I'll talk about, and they're led by industry professionals. So companies may lead our workshops, uh, community members, parents, we have teens that get involved with us, and we really want to inspire girls to explore tech and all that it has to offer. As one of the one of the best uh, career outlooks it currently, uh, we really need to help inspire and attract these girls to that field. Unfortunately, there's less than 27% of women in tech, and that's abysmal. <laughs> we really need to find a way to inspire them, to let them know that the community supports them in these decisions. And really, we find that the middle school age is so crit critical. We have 10 to 14 year olds. Um, there's data that says once they get to high school, that's when they kind of decide what they're into. So at this middle school age, if we don't have them <laughs> excited about technology or think that it's just coding, then we've lost them, unfortunately. So we really want to start at that middle school age where they start to explore careers, um, try to get some positive relationships with the community members and role models that could be a part of our program where they can envision themselves in these roles. So that's really more about our mission. We've been around for, this is our 12th year now, um, and we are national. So we started on the East Coast in the Philadelphia region, and we've been expanding more and more because there's such a high need for these types of programs. And I'm gonna tell you all about how you can run your own program, which I'm super excited about. So I do have a video here. Um, we're gonna see if it works. I don't think we checked my audio video during the, you know, the tech test, and I realized yeah. afterwards we could try it, but it does give a better uh, explanation and what kind of impact and why we need tech girls. So we can try it. If it doesn't work, I can always send the link. It is on YouTube, um, but we're gonna try it. So let's see. <laughs> Because you did it, yeah, it would depend on how your audio is going. Yeah, that's the thing. So we'll see. We'll try it out. <laughs> but you did. There it is. So are you able to hear the music? I guess we'll check that first when I was playing it. No, but I can do it from my screen. Let me see here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, you want to? Yeah, give, oh, it's not a problem. We can do this. I will, because because uh, you sent me your slides ahead of time. Yay! Yes, for technical so, issues that may happen. Um, <laughs> so, do I want to stop sharing and then you take over? Just no, hang on a second. I will do it. I'm just letting the video get through the ad. Ha. Okay, perfect. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm going to pull presenter control to my screen briefly, and then I'll hand it right back. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Is that showing? Tech Girls is important because as a young girl, I think what happened to me opting out of technology at a young age and then finding my way back happens to uh, a lot of other girls. And I think a lot of that is a lack of role models. So being here gives them an environment where they can explore their hobbies and interests with other people that believe that they can do this. Technology touches everything that we do and understanding how to use leverage and, and live off of technology and develop things around it becomes so fundamental to the job growth and uh, what we as individuals can do to really improve society, uh, bringing more women to the ecosystem. It's going to be so fundamentally important to, uh, to make sure that happens. Tech growth has helped my daughter because it has exposed her to many of my opportunities in the technological field that I'm unaware of and she's unaware of. I did not know about different types of jobs until I came to Tech Girls. I knew only about being like a doctor and a dentist and stuff like that. When I go to college, I want to be an animator. You can do shadings and move the pictures, make sure they're equal and stuff. So I want to not be involved in that. The reason why I support Tech Girls is for purely selfish reasons. Specifically, <laughs> I feel there's a complete lack of women in game design. As of last year in 2012, it was estimated to be about 
70 plus billion dollar uh, industry globally. Um, and certainly there's a shameful lack of women in the game industry. And this is my hope to try to at least uh, as a one person way to change that. I got really lucky to have a man who was able to pull me into technology, bring over computers, take them apart and all of that. But I feel like a lot of girls don't have that, which is where Tech Girls comes in. It gives them a chance to explore technologies that otherwise they wouldn't really have a chance to. I had uh, some similar programs when I was in middle school that just were exposure to kind of technology related subjects, but I would definitely love to have something as specific as this where you could really um, get to get your hands on real technology and actually be doing something. It's opened an entire world for my daughter. She had access to a lot of different programs over the summers and um, she did great in them, but she was always very self-conscious because she was the only girl. Having tech girls has been a way for her to meet other girls with some more interest and to see that she's not alone. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, helping me out there. <laughs> no All right. So we will. I will switch back to you, Sarah, and give you control yeah. again. You should see the pop up. We can show your screen. Yes. Wonderful. Yeah. So, and I will mention while we're here too, since we had to do this little swap here, um, that afterwards with the record, when you get the archive recording on the page that has the link to our video of our show will also be a link to the slide presentation that Sarah has here. So you will also have all of this info on the link to the YouTube video yourself as well. Sweet. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And you know, that video I think does a good job of giving you a little insight into the parents that may uh, be bringing their girls to these events. It gives you insight into volunteers that work with our programs um, and of course the girls so it's really exciting to see their faces and you know the girls want to come to these events it's just the matter of you know connecting with the right organizations and people that are also passionate about helping you know youth so I want to talk a little bit more about our curriculum and how you can utilize our curriculum into creating a program so like I said before, Tech Girls is really about more than code. We have various tech topic workshop in a workshop format that touch on designing your own mobile app. Girls can learn how to uh, create their own game design and develop their own game. We have robotics. We have literally anything you can really think of because we're really trying to get girls to get excited about technology. Of course, we have coding, but we really strive to expose girls to as many different topics as possible because they may go to one of the workshops and be like, mm, that wasn't for me. But they may say, that's okay. Like, at least you had that experience and now you know, right? But there's so many different topics that they can choose from that if there's another workshop topic that they probably haven't attended before, they can go to that one too. And they may be excited about podcasting or you know, DJing or one of these other topics that we may have. So it's really important that we keep a really rum rambunctious, I guess, I don't know, robust uh, curriculum as technology. I say rambunctious, but that's just me. I um, think either one. You know? <laughs> yeah, rambunctious, robust yeah. Uh, topics, because we are working with younger girls and we have to let them know that this could be possibly an avenue for them in the future, whether it's in a career or maybe, you know, it's more passion, their passion, and they find that passion by attending these different topic and topics and workshops and camps. So as you can see, there's some pictures here. We are in person and we are virtual, which is really exciting because we're able to reach such a large uh, community base, regardless of if they're in person or virtual. And of course, we were able to pivot our curriculum during the pandemic to really ensure that we're still meet, reaching girls. And what we noticed is there was a lot of girls we weren't reaching because they weren't able to physically go to these locations. So. It's really exciting to see that balance and how we're still continuing to offer that virtual aspect. If organizations or companies are looking to host these events, um, they have that option. We have had some organizations that could support hybrid models. So 
you know, we're really, really flexible to what fits your library, what fits your community. Um, and I thought that was interesting as well. And I'll explain how to run these programs in either format. So who can attend these workshops? We strive to reach any girl, regardless of experience in fifth through eighth grade. So at these workshops or these camps that you may be running, you may have a fifth grader uh, who has a lot of technical experience versus you may have an eighth grader that may not have a lot of technical experience. And it actually creates a really welcoming environment because the girls are going to end up teaching each other. So that type of collaboration is super, super helpful. You're going to have girls with different cultures, different backgrounds, and it really makes it exciting. And we are really striving to incorporate uh, you know, collaboration and inclusivity in our programs. And of course, we want to ensure that regardless of experience, any middle school girl can attend. So I'm going to go over the curriculum and this is going to be where you're going to find the most important information and how to get started. So I've talked about our workshop plan. So this is really our bread and butter. We've been doing this for over 12 years and you can see once I go through it, how everything is lined up. What's really great about our curriculum also is that it's open to the public, meaning that you would create a free account on our website and you can access our workshop plans right there. Um, so let me just click on this and we can go through our, I'm gonna to go to the website first and then I'll show you how to get to our curriculum. So one of the big things about Tech Girls is it's techgirlswithaz.org. We get a lot of people going to Tech Girls with an S, so just keep that in mind. It's got a Z at the end. But when you go to our website, this is really where you're going to find some information about us, uh, about our current events that may be happening, and I can show you that. Uh, that we have a blog that really is exciting because we have a lot of teams that write blogs and interview people and give their insight. We have our volunteer spotlight blog, which shows what it's like to volunteer. And it's from the volunteer uh, perspective and running program. So that's really cool to read as well. But I'm going to focus on the curriculum today. So you would go to techgirls.org and at the top, you would click download curricula. Now the download curricula has a bunch of different things here. It has workshop plans. We do have camps that are about a built up. Some are already built out and some you kind of have to build out on your own. Um, but along those lines, we do have that option where a camp plan may be about a week to a week and a half of programming content versus a workshop plan, which are standalone workshops on a topic. They usually run about two to three hours of in-person programming. Virtual programs, we usually suggest that you cut it down to about two hours because, again, you are working with fifth through eighth grade girls. And I don't know about you, sometimes being online, I get really, really tired, and we don't want to do that to the girls that are attending these events. So, virtual, we suggest about two hours if you're running it virtually. In person, you can be flexible. So, if you need to, maybe the workshop plan is two to three hours normally, some can last longer. Uh, maybe your girls just need longer time on that topic. Maybe you really want to deep dive on it and take your time. You can always split it up into multiple sessions. It's really meant to be tailored for your community and your needs from the girls and how they're, you know, progressing throughout the content. Um, but usually we suggest an in-person workshop is about stand standalone two to three hours of content. So that's how you would kind of plan out, but again, you can be flexible with your community needs. So if you need to do break it up into one hour sessions, you can, um, it's really up to you. So let's go through the tech shops in a box. I do want to mention there are instructor difficulty levels. So I'm going to flat out say I had no tech experience beyond, you know, like Google Slides and maybe learning some like web design like on my own as I was a teacher and helping the kids learn technology but what's really great is I am myself obviously I've been with Tech Girls for a while now about four years and I will say when I first started I went to the basic 
levels of our workshops. And since our workshop lesson plans are so step by step by step, it's literally funneling you information. So you're essentially teaching yourself before you teach the workshop, similar to like any program or curriculum that you're following. But I always suggest starting at the basic level. Um, all of our workshop plans will include a detailed lesson plan, a slideshow. So you would use that slideshow to present and then any handouts or activities that may be needed will be in the actual workshop plan. It's also important to note that, what do you need for these workshops? So the majority of our workshops require three things. So the first thing is Wi-Fi. The second thing is a projector, so you can present the presentation. And the third thing would be having Chromebooks or laptops for either each individual girl attending, or you know you can partner them up if you have limited um, amount of computers, or the girls can bring in their own laptop or Chromebook. And the reason why I say laptop or Chromebook is because a lot of schools will often you know loan a student maybe those materials so they can bring that in. And with our workshops, we really try to increase accessibility. So with that in mind, we want to ensure that you're not downloading a bunch of things, you don't have to purchase external hardware. Really all you need is to open up a browser for a lot of these programs that the girls will be using. So that makes it a lot more accessible, no essential costs associated with most of our workshops. So that way you can kind of pick and choose with ease based off having those three basic um, materials. And of course, if you have experience and knowledge on some topics, then check out the two level. The two level, you might be like, oh, that's that's kind of scary. I'm not sure about that. It's actually not terrible. Um, there are some two level when I was first beginning that I was like, oh, I can do this. This is super easy. Um, now, advanced, I will say you need to be comfortable with these ideas, the languages, and more, more the advanced ones increase external hardware usage. So. I'll go through a couple of them and explain what I mean by that, but really advanced, you gotta know your material, you gotta know your basics more than that, um, than maybe your basic or intermediate levels. And and by languages, you're talking about like computer languages or- Yeah, so computer language or that topic language. So for instance, mm -hmm. if I go down, I'm just gonna click on advanced. Um, if I'm teaching about engineering and roller coasters, there is some very specific language about engineering in there. And if I don't know anything, it may be a little bit more difficult sure. and I may trip up a little bit more versus yeah. if I go to basic, oh, you can code. Okay, I know a little bit about coding. You know, I'm, I can click on this and see what it's all about, but it's gonna be more entry level versus the advanced, I would say. And inter intermediate is like you get more comfortable as you continue to maybe volunteer or you're just passionate about, you know, computer science and technology. So you're kind of like, ooh, I already know this stuff. Um, it's really based off your experiences, but that's kind of how they're leveled. Nice. Yeah, so let's start with designing mobile apps, I'll do that one first. So what you'll see is it will be leveled with the start indication. It will say if this workshop is available virtually, meaning yes, we have adapted it and adjusted it to be taught virtually as well. Some of them may not have that, so keep that in mind. But all of them are ready to go for in person, so that's awesome as well. So let's click on this, and what's gonna happen, it will ask you to sign in. Now, I'm a returning user, so I'm already signed in, but when you first look at this, you'll see a new user, and you'll just register, and then that way you'll get an email and be like, oh, you're registered, you can sign in and get your workshop plans now kind of thing. If for some reason your account isn't working or if there's an issue, you can always email us at info at techgirls.org and we will work on the back end to make sure that you are able to access our curriculum and try to figure out what's going on with your account. So we always have that support lined up if you're having issues. So once I click on a workshop, it will just give me like a brief introduction of what the students are going to be doing, what are they going to be learning, and any additional uh, program that they'll be using. But you really want to look at the workshop plan. So workshop plans, I'm a former teacher, so when I look at this, I'm like, 
oh, this is just like a lesson plan. And if you're not a former teacher, that's okay. Uh, this will look very, very similar to other curriculum you may have looked at before. Um, it's actually a really great representation of what curriculum should look like. So <laughs> super exciting uh, to see this. And all the workshops will have the same format. So we're not changing anything up except for the topic, the activities, of course, and the instruction materials, but it will have the same format. So you're not going to freak out by switching different topics and not, not knowing what to look. It's all in the same format. I love that so much. Yeah, <laughs> same. <laughs> So going through this, the first thing we'll go over is the tech shop overview. It will just give you a brief introduction of what this workshop is all about. What's the experience, some knowledge of design thinking. We embed that so you can look at what is design thinking. Of course, it's Wikipedia, quick link. Hopefully, if you wanna just Google it, that's fine too. Um, and then it tells you how long it will take. It will also give you objectives, which is really important if you're, trying to maybe get um, to persuade your library to run this program, you can literally line, line this up and be like, hey, in this workshop, this is what our girls are going to learn. So it creates more value to not only um, what, like why, like your, your reasoning why you want to run it, but here's what they're actually going to learn by the end of this. Let's see if I can check their learning. Uh, what's also great is that there's a suggested assessment and all them. So what should they be able to do by the end? But this is your nuts and bolts of your lesson plan. It's going to be a resource and material section. It will include the slideshow um, for virtual and in person. I do want to point out that sometimes our slides are different for virtual and it will indicate it here. But I do want to just kind of show you a little bit what this lesson plan, or not this lesson plan, what this slide deck looks like. So this current slide deck is set up for if you're running it virtually as well. So it's a combined one. So if you need to skip over some of these, you can. If you need, you know, I you would make a copy of this because you can't edit this. I can because I'm staff, so I can edit it. But the main one that you're getting will be, you know, you won't have edit access. So you can make a copy of it just train file, make a copy, uh, and then you can kind of edit it as needed. We suggest you keep about 75% of our content. If you want to add things into the slideshow, you can. Maybe you want to take this lesson plan and add some more of doo -doo -doo -doo, the actual instructions just to kind of keep you in order. Like, hey, this is the introduction piece. Okay, this is my lesson plan. Okay, this is the introduction piece. I'll put that on my slideshow so I know that's the introduction piece. So you can really manipulate it based off what works for you. Add slides, remove slides that don't make sense, but it's really giving you a great example of how we really want to empower those who are running our programs because we're giving you essentially all the materials and it's gonna give you notes which I love. So like if I'm presenting and I'm like, wait, sometimes you don't wanna have your lesson plan out or your workshop plan out. This way there's some notes that can help guide you as well. So for instance, this one on this step, it has some things of what you should do for virtual. And here are some things you should do for in-person. So always check the notes of the presentation slideshow. There's some really great uh, tips in here. Overall, the presentation slideshow is just taking the workshop plan and putting it into a presentation. There are some things that are not explicitly spelled out from the lesson plan into the slideshow, so you always want to read the lesson workshop plan first. Um, I do want to make sure that you see the rest of the resource and materials. So, for instance, this one uses a wireframing activity. So you can, oh, that one, I gotta fix that one. Um, see, these things come up, so this is good. So our wireframing template needs to be fixed, but usually you can go in here and it'll just bring it up. Um, you can print out our handouts and, or you could just for this one, I would say, if you don't want, like some libraries don't have the budget to just print out a bunch of, you know, <laughs> templates, you could just use scratch paper too. So really making sure that you look at the resources first. We always, always love when, and we always ask that our participants use the survey. 
uh, so that we have that data because since we're a nonprofit, we really get our funding and our donors from how many girls we're serving with our curriculum. And then also that survey data lets us know instantly like what needs to be updated, what needs to be changed, what did the girls like, what did they dislike? Um, you know, that data is so, so important because we want to make sure that we're putting curriculum out there that the girls enjoy if we need to update anything. So we always ask after any program that you run to have the girls complete that survey. And if you're not sure or you forget at the end of every slide presentation, it always reminds you to please have them fill out the survey. It is literally like a three minute survey. So it's not super long. You know, you can have the girls complete that. They will get like a fun little certificate with their name on it. So the girls love it, uh, but we want to make sure we're getting that important data. So I'm not gonna go through every step of this tech shop, but each tech shop will have like a suggested of what you should do when the students arrive. Okay, you know, maybe you wanna assign student teams in this one as they enter the classroom. So that way they're ready to work in partners or in a group for this specific workshop that suggests that. There's always uh, an introduction section and we have icebreaker activity suggestions as well at the bottom of this workshop plan, and then it gets right into the workshop. So the workshop portion of the workshop plan goes into like the activities that you're doing. So for the first part of this workshop, we're brainstorming. We're figuring out what, you know, what is really the reason behind developing an app? What's the process of developing an app? And then the girls get to experience designing the user experience. So they will learn about user flow. They'll learn about these different vocabulary concepts that aren't necessarily in our school systems, that they're not necessarily seeing this. So this is a great way to get that introductory level of design, but they're still gonna learn hands-on. So for this one, they're gonna start after they figure out their wireframing and figure out what that concept is of user experience and user flow. Then they're gonna start figuring out what app they wanna make, which is really exciting to see. <laughs> they're gonna create a prototype of their app. It's all gonna be drawn out before they get to using the program, which is a Marvel app. So I talked about how we really strive to have, just open up a browser and they're able to use that program. Some of these do require sign-ins, so just keep that in mind when you're doing prep work for your prep work for your workshop that you may want to, you know, <laughs> make sure the girls have their Marvel account when they come in because that way they are ready and set up for it. And if they need help signing up, you can show them how to sign up. Keep in mind that I didn't say this yet, but tech girls will help promote your workshop. So if you need help promoting your workshop, uh, we have a newsletter that goes out every couple of weeks. It is national. Um, we really strive to help our organizations if they need to boost up registration or get the name out there that they are part, or not partnering, I should say that formally, that they are collaborating with us, um, then we want to make sure that we help them with, if they need their registration created, uh, we can do that for you. Uh, if you need us to promote it, we can do that for you. So keep that in mind as you're thinking about your library and what you need. Uh, that sometimes is helpful to have it listed on our website. We can promote it on social media, but a lot of libraries are like, no, we're good. We'll just promote it through our own program and our own events calendar. It's really, you know, we're pretty flexible with that, but we really do ask when you are utilizing our curriculum to always submit an event form, which I'll talk about in a second, just so we can keep record of all the events that are happening. But I do want to go back to this workshop plan it will also usually require the girls to present what they made. They spent all this time doing something in this workshop. So we wanna ensure that we give them confidence to speak publicly, to feel confident in their pro, basically their project that they made. Um, and then this is a really fun time to kind of share and show off what they made during this time. We do usually have optional extension activities, and then of course the closing. So always 
going back to encouraging the students, uh, talking about how they can further understand maybe this topic. And then we always have a take out, not, not always, but sometimes we have a take home activity they can do as well. There's some additional notes. So this is what I was talking about. Uh, we ask that anyone utilizing our curriculum, that they let us know that they're utilizing our curriculum. The only, not the only, but the main reason our curriculum is free and open for anyone to use is because we are hoping that they will let us know and we were collaborating and that way we can really tell and report how many girls we are serving and that's our whole mission for our organization and then there's an instructor feedback form so this is really important like i said this link didn't work so as an instructor you can say, hey, this link didn't work. You can always contact me directly if anything in the curriculum's not working before your workshop and we can try to figure out what's going on. Uh, we'll send that to the curriculum team and make sure that gets updated. And lastly, I always suggest looking at the additional resources. These get overlooked all the time, but they have great videos, sometimes handouts and additional principles of the concepts. So for instance, if you don't know iOS design that well or Android design, then definitely check that out. We have teaching tips. So if you don't feel comfortable teaching, here's some teaching tips. Um, if you uh, need help with internet safety tips, we have those. And of course, icebreakers listed because sometimes who has time to go looking up icebreaker activities? I mean, I do, but <laughs> some people don't before they start teaching and it's right there in a list and we created and curated that list for you. So we really want to ensure that we create as much resources and as much uh, purposeful materials for you when you are running your programs. So that's a lot of information, I know. <laughs> I just want to go over a little bit about our camp plans and what that looks like and also submitting your event when you are ready to utilize our curriculum. So our camp plans, like I briefly mentioned, uh, there's some here, they're called Tech Camp in a Box. There are some already download and go. So these are three to five days. You can click on it, you can read more about it, and they include agenda, speaker notes, and slideshows for each day. And then you can customize your own camp. So you can build out your own camp by combining workshop topics. So I looked at all the workshop topics. Okay, well, I wanna make a cybersecurity one. All right, so what would that kind of look like? Uh, we list some of our workshops from our workshop curriculum that you can utilize and break it down. It's really more at your own autonomy and making it more your own. And then if you need extra help, you can always hit more info and we would be happy to help in any way that we can. We do have additional resources on here. So how to run a tech pod, that's a different uh, program where it's more where you meet with the same group of girls for about five to six weeks. And it's really, you're running multiple workshops with the same group of girls, similar to like a cohort. So it gives more information about that. A lot of people are more interested in how to run a workshop, just a standalone workshop, and then how to run a camp. So there are some things on here that can definitely help you get started. Let's say I want to, do, 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 where is it? I want to submit a program. It's, I don't see it on here. Where is it? Well, we do have a submit event, a form. So if you're interested in utilizing our curriculum, you would utilize this form, whether it's a workshop, a camp, or a tech pod. And we suggest that you fill this out six to eight weeks in advance. Now, the reason behind that is we need to, if you want us to help promote it, we need to get the word out. And of course, we usually suggest for libraries to also promote it and ensure that we have enough time, get enough registrants. If we need to change strategy or you need help with marketing, maybe you need a flyer made, we can help support you um, to try to entice the attendees to actually attend. But it's pretty straightforward if you were to use a workshop of ours. Um, like I said, designing mobile apps, is this in person? Yes, no, let's just say yes. Um, do you wanna change the workshop description here? Maybe there's something you wanna add, but really it's a straightforward um, event form that you would fill out if you're interested, if you want us to use any hashtags, where are you located? So we really ensure this is very thorough. If you are 
running this in person and you want stickers, we can send those to you. The girls love our little tech girl stickers. Um, but this form goes directly to our team to ensure that we get notified when you're utilizing our curriculum, whether it is public, meaning that it's open to anyone or private, which means that you just want it, you know, for a group. Maybe you have a Girl Scout group in your area that wants to do one of these programs and you want to run it privately just for them. So you would still fill out this form regardless of if it's open to the public or maybe it's for a private group in your community. And so just to clarify, do you have to fill out that event form if you're doing an event or is it like optional just if you want to? Yeah, so our event form is to communicate with us that you are utilizing our curriculum. It is required because that okay. way we can keep records of you utilizing our curriculum, how many girls you're serving. We just need records of how many girls you're serving if you don't want us to promote it or if you don't want us to do registration for you. Um, that way we can record those numbers for funding purposes to ensure that we can keep keeping, keeping these curriculums free. So, yes, awesome. that is required. And so we also do have a lot of libraries that are like super small. Mm -hmm. And I know that some have asked, like, we can't, like, maybe we can't do a code club or we can't do something just with our organization. But do you have like a format where we can work together with like the local region, like maybe seven or eight libraries get together and all host virtually or all just like pick one spot to be able to host? Like, yeah, so that's a really that? good question. Um, as long as it's an organizational ran program, regardless of which community members are being a part of volunteering, as long as it's hosted, like if it's a virtual program, it needs to be hosted on a library's organizational platform. So okay. when we are yeah. filling out that form, uh, it's very important that whoever is hosting it virtually or in person has that name. It's just a legal thing. So like, since it's who's ever holding that space to host minors would be legally responsible for that event, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, so that's kind of where it gets a little tricky, but as long as we have that information and everyone is kosher with everyone volunteering and being yeah. part of that kind of format, then you're good to go. Awesome. Yeah, good question. So I'm gonna continue on with types of programs and I touched base upon this a little bit already. How long are these workshops? They're two to three hours of in-person programming. What does that include? everything you can think of i hope <laughs> if not more and they can be run in person or virtually so virtual programs these are about two hours and it can be run internally with your own program participants so let's say you have a tech club running already and you want to use one of our workshops for a program go ahead and do it um that's that's an easy win for everyone right I always get the question, what if we want um, it open to like the general public? Can anyone go? Does it have to be residents? Uh, no, it, it should be open to everyone. Of course, I know libraries sometimes only serve maybe a few different towns or a few different cities. So keep that in mind that if we post it on our website as intended, there may be um, people driving or uh, commuting from further than just your local city. So keep that in mind. Internal programs, like I said, you can have your participants already and you can just utilize our curriculum. Maybe it's a drop-in program, um, spice it up a little bit. <laughs> you can definitely utilize our programs as needed. Even if you're doing it internally, uh, we still ask that you submit that event form so we can keep track. And I'll just be your contact um, for right now about communicating how many girls you served, maybe some feedback of how it went, um, any questions you may have if it is running internally. Uh, and we'll go from there. Sweet. And we are very flexible. So if you're like, mm, what about this? Oh, that doesn't fall under this category. I'm, I'm not gonna do it. Reach out to us, let us know. Maybe there's something that we haven't thought of before. Uh, maybe there's a format that just works specifically for your community. Just let us know. We, the worst thing we could say is no, right? <laughs> so keep that in mind. Um, usually we, we're very, very flexible to ensure that these programs are reaching girls. Um, so just reach out and we'll try to figure out, uh, maybe give you some feedback of what, a, what other programs have ran and what that kind of looked like and what success rate looked there. Um, and every community is different. So we're very mindful of implementation of our programs and how it may serve our participants. 
And have you also run into any communities that say, we love your curriculum, we do want to reach girls, but we also want to reach boys too? Like, are we allowed to invite boys to these groups? Yeah, that's a great question. And I get that a lot. Um, the only thing is you can teach these programs to whoever you want. Us as an organization, we can only record the numbers that are for fifth through eighth grade girls. And if it is a program that is combined uh, where it's boys and girls, then we just can't promote it because it's not a tech girls, you know, just for girls program. But we do ask that you still fill out that event form so that we know that you're utilizing our curriculum because it's really exciting. We actually are in the process of an expansion right now. So we are looking into like a middle school program um, based off our tech girl success. We wanna ensure that we are still inspiring youth, especially the middle school age, so even if you have a combined program, there's just two caveats to that where we can't necessarily promote it, um, but you can still utilize it uh, and just record and tell us how many fifth through eighth grade girls you are served with that program. Awesome. Yeah, great question. Well, and we also ran into like kind of a murky question about yeah. what about like the non-binary and like yeah. other genders? Yeah, that's a great question. We do have policies on our participants, which I will gladly share. Uh, but if a student identifies as non-binary um, or no gender identity, they can still attend if they are feeling comfortable in a maybe a more female uh, dominated uh, area. So if they want to attend and they're that non-binary, non-identifying student, they are more than welcome to attend. Because yeah. I know everyone's like playing around with the right phrasing to use for that. Like, is it tech girls? Is it people who identify as a girl? Do you include non-binary? And it's, yes. yeah. Yes, we are, We the answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> so tech girls and um, participants who are non-identifying, non-binary, they are more than welcome to identify in our space. And we welcome those communities that uh, want to do so. So that's great. Awesome. Cool. And we have some additional language we can support because we have had specifically a community um, in my region that asked that question and they were like, how do we phrase this when we're doing recruiting? We have that to support that type of um, language. So just feel free to reach out and we can send that along as well. Cool. And remember earlier you did mention something about uh, inclusivity and, and as well. So yeah. Yeah, of course. Great questions. So I know I have a few minutes left. I do want to just touch base on some of these additional programs. I talked about the tech camp, so that's great. I also just want to mention we have a national tech girls, tech girls teen advisory board, which is girls in grade nine through 12 who want to also be a part of the tech girls mission. They really help implement, promote, advocate for our tech girls programs and they are national. Um, and I'm the current advisor and we love supporting them in their tech journey. So they may be doing different things. They have specific goals that they wanna reach at the beginning of the year and I help support them to reach those go goals. So if you know any teen girls that are interested, we always have applications open in the fall. So keep that in mind. I know a lot of the girls that are part of TAB don't have that community, unfortunately, or that support uh, locally. So this is a great way to build friendships and also build confidence as they explore technology. Sweet. So what's our impact? Kind of cool, over 30,000 as of 2022. Uh, we always say for one tech girls volunteer, at least five more girls get expired. And 82% of our girls have changed their mind about a career in tech after attending a tech shop. Yes. <laughs> so super exciting to hear that and see that. Uh, I, I just wanna mention that if you are running a tech girls program, we usually suggest at one lead instructor, maybe one to two teaching assistants and about 15 to 20 girls in a workshop. You can have less, you can have more. Uh, it's really, really flexible on uh, how many girls can attend. Maybe your space is smaller, maybe your space is bigger, but really keeping that in mind. Now for virtual events, we suggest we open it up to 30 girls because any virtual event, as you know, you get that drop off rate. So we may open a workshop to about 30 girls and you may get, you know, 10, maybe nine, maybe 12. It really just kind of depends. That virtual drop off rate is a reality, whether yep. uh, we want to accept it or not, but that's okay. So we always suggest that our virtual programs, you have 
a more allotment of students, regardless of maybe, you know, one lead instructor and one or two teaching assistants. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of how that works. And have you tracked any like the long term stories? Like, did you hear from any girls that said, I graduated college, I'm a software engineer now and <laughs> Yeah, we have a couple narratives that we're currently working on. Uh, we do keep a lot of our TAB members, of course, like they, they started in 2007, I believe. So a lot of our TAB members now that started in that first group are on into their careers and they do, we do touch base with them. We're working on a couple narratives because we do get that question a lot. I will say our last TAB high school group, I believe 10 out of, it was either nine out of 10 of the graduating class going into college uh, are in a STEM major. So uh, that's really exciting to see that data. And uh, we are, we have a couple individuals who are working on their narratives to get that message out there. But we are just now starting that data and collecting that. But I thought that graduating class last year, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. Since I was their advisor last year too. Um, it's just really exciting. And I actually had a couple tab members from last year talk to our current tab members this year um, about college and, you know, they're doing quite well in their CS program. So yeah, super exciting to hear. I call that a win. I know, right? <laughs> for sure, for sure. So, you know, why run in this program, really talking about uh, have building and being a driving force for a diverse and gender balanced community, demonstrating your support of women in tech in your community. Um, you don't have to be a woman yourself to run these programs, you know, it's showing that you support young girls in this type of field and they don't see that a lot. Fostering relationships and adding to the future women of technology, super, super beneficial. I have you gotta love that. You know? <laughs> I mean, I would hope so, but yeah. <laughs> so who can help anyone? So if you're at a library and you don't feel comfortable running it, ask your local high school for teenagers mm -hmm. that need volunteer hours. Um, right. Talk to tech professionals in, in your community that maybe want to help volunteer and talk about their career. Uh, talk to teachers. Maybe they have a passion for technology or helping girls and they don't really have that opportunity in the school system uh, and parents parents are very very helpful to help support whether they want to be a lead instructor a teaching assistant is always super helpful um, to have uh, as well so anyone from ninth grade and up can help and support yes and how can you help start a tech girls pr program using our curriculum Maybe it'll take a little bit to get some momentum. That's okay. I know a lot of libraries that start a new program, they might get disheartened that only one or two people came, but you are still meeting those one or two girls that haven't been met before. Uh, and that will really help inspire other girls to possibly join as well. So reaching out to local schools, reaching out, of course, to your library network, letting them know these programs are happening, that they're free, they're engaging, and they're hands-on. Uh, encourage young girls to explore technology, to sign up for our programs that are running right now. And I don't think I did mention that, but we do have programs running right now. So if you go to our workshop, our workshop, our lessons, our, I can't even talk, our website, uh, you will see we have virtual programs that any fifth through eighth grade girl can join. You can see there's some in-person programs, but you can see all the different things that are currently running by organizations that want to open it up to the public and companies that want to run these programs. So I just want to mention that in case, you know, maybe you're not ready to start your own program we have opportunities out there already existing that you can steer fifth through eighth grade girls to as a resource yeah if you know someone is interested in that area or has mentioned something you could say hey here's something free out there that might get you started exactly exactly and you don't know where that would go uh you know once they take a workshop they may be like oh this is really cool maybe i'll start my own tech girls club at my when I get to high school or at my middle school. So um, we love that our community that really helps out a lot of, yeah. I think that helps a lot of libraries. We always get this question and I'm sure I get it today. How much time does it take on the library side to to prepare and do and what are they, you know, because you know they've got a lot of things they're doing already yeah. and 
another thing to do um, if they want to do, but like how much time do they need to dedicate to it? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think, you know, we have programs that are running. I usually say two months, plan at least two months um, in advance to uh, pick a topic. I'm, I'm sorry, from start to finish, meaning from submitting your workshop to running your workshop, about two months. And it's not like really daunting in the sense that you have to look at that workshop plan every day. You have to know it backwards and forwards. Like if you don't know something, that's okay. The girls learn from our role modeling, right? So if yeah. we can work together and figure it out. But two months in the sense that once you submit your workshop to our event form, um, you have about two months before, or six to eight weeks before you actually lead that workshop. So maybe, you know, every week you go through the lesson plan for an hour, hour and a half maybe. Um, you know, maybe you need to set up some meetings with uh, teaching assistants of course uh to prepare that's probably like two three hours <laughs> total but you know if you are having trouble with maybe starting a program or running a program at your library because no one's interested i can do a small little like lunch and learn with your group meaning like we can set a time where you may be all in a physical location of people that are interested and i can present to them about what we're just talking about right now. So our curriculum a little bit more, some tips and tricks of running the program, whether it's in person or virtual. Um, it's a little bit more tailored to your library's needs um, and the community members that might be leading it. So that's an option as well if you're interested in doing like a 30, 45 minute meeting with people that might be interested to help recruit them to get involved, I can run that as well. So we're definitely open to that. Because uh, I know trying to get people involved can take some time. So <laughs> just kind of keeping that in mind. And that's why Tech Girls is awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that should have been my title. That's my title. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. And then you just go on your way. Well, I'm going to add that to my next slide. But I am Do officially it. done. I know we're at time. But I just want to say, you know, here are some next steps. Any questions we didn't get to today, please email me sneeman at comptia.org or you can info at techgirls.org and I will gladly answer any questions for you. Yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah, if anybody does have any questions, um, yeah, it's 11.01 uh, by my clock, but that's okay. We started a little bit later after 10 and we don't get cut off just because we meet our it's 11 a.m. Um, if anybody does have any questions, any last minute urgent questions you want to ask of Sarah, um, go ahead and type into the questions section and we can definitely um, get them answered right now. Or, of course, as she said, reach out to her later when you are um, maybe thinking about doing this in your library. Um, so I think this is, this is a great uh, resource definitely for, for libraries and just for people wanting to, uh, girls wanting to attend those workshops that are available to anybody. Uh, maybe get them started with those and they'll become so enamored with them that they'll come back to the library and say, hey, can we do one of these here? <laughs> yeah that would help. be wonderful yeah <laughs> i will help if you you know since i had such a good time at the ones that i attended already let's do our own <laughs> that's an ideal right that's that's the that's the ideal we do have libraries that have their own teen advisory boards too um yeah that definitely. definitely you should reach out to and see hey 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 kids do you all want to do this what do you think yeah yeah, I love reaching out to the teens. The teens really know their stuff. They know way more than I do half the time. I'm like, <laughs> okay, that's great. Like, I love it. Like, and they're so creative as well. And I will just mention that anytime these tech girls attendees go to these workshops, the things they create and the ideas they come up with and they create it into life and they can show you, it's just amazing. Like they want to be there and they're just so excited to be a part of something different and fun and hands-on. Yeah. Love the community support as well. Something like they those those girls in the video mentioned something they never thought about before, and exactly. it just gave them that you know little taste enough of the taste to realize this is a thing exactly. I can do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I wish I had this when I was younger. Um, and I've heard that many times. Uh, so I would have really... loved this when I was younger. I know. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm just I, like, where I'm... was it? Yeah, and I I I, I went the. English major route in college and whatnot, but I always read and was interested in things like sci-fi and fantasy books and things and movies and those shows and but never enough there wasn't anything for me to jump to. There was one I yeah. remember when I was in 
in high school, there's like one computer programming class that was just right. basic, very basics. And I took, I thought it was so cool, but then that was it. There wasn't yeah. anything beyond yeah. that. And so you kind of got left hanging. Yeah. Like, okay. That was fun. But what, what else was <laughs> there in high school? to Now what? <laughs> and yeah, that way back there was not that option. Oh, well. It's like, my high school only had like the one comp sci class too and it was it was all boys like it was all yeah. boys mm -hmm. um, and there was like we did actually have that stigma in our high school that was like well this is for boys like this is a career for boys and this is what girls do right and so my brother was in computer science and he's a software engineer now and it was just like it just wasn't what you do mm -hmm. so I heart tech, but I was an English major. <laughs> you know, I'm all techie. Know, I'm techie later. with it now. But yeah. you know. there are tech innovation librarian now. You can always change. You know. Don't be stuck in whatever yeah. we're doing. Right. <laughs> right. Tech is everywhere. Tech is literally right. everywhere. And uh, if we can bring those passions into a career, that's ideal. And yeah. that's kind of what we're trying to do. So. Yeah. And now I heart code. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I heart code. I love that. Yeah. I should get that on a t-shirt. Does code heart yeah. you though? Does code yeah. heart you back? <laughs> That's the hard part. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Right. Sometimes mm -hmm. I miss a semicolon and it hates me That's for like an bad. hour. But yeah, you know. right. That exactly. way for even people who are the experts. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, it doesn't look like any other questions came in right now while we were chatting. That's okay. I think we can um, wrap up for today. Um, thank you, Sarah. Uh, thank you, Amanda, for bringing Sarah on to talk about that. This um, about Tech Girls today. This is awesome. I hope some of our libraries will reach out to you and we'll start getting some more of these programs here in Nebraska or anywhere. Um, if any of our libraries do do this, let us know so we can um, promote what you're doing and, and share it everywhere. Awesome. awesome. So, Thank you so much. And I look forward to collaborating in the future. And yeah, yeah. I hope you all have a wonderful and warm day. It's very cold here. Yeah. But it's I nice hope to have it's here anything. right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's mine, right? Yeah. Um, all right. So um, I'm going to pull presenter control back. We got some thank yous coming in on the on the chat now, though. Thank you. You're thank welcome. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you everybody for being here. So I'm going to pull back presenter control to my screen. Um, do there we go and do my wrap up for today Get up there yes there we go all right so that will wrap it up for today's show thank you everybody for being here today um uh, we do i do have one last question for you uh sarah when we're wrapped up when we're done here so um please do um hold on until um we're, i'm done with my wrap up uh so um yes that'll wrap up for today's show um the show has been recorded it will be on our archive page um, if you go to our Encompass Live page over here, these are our upcoming shows. And the link to the archives is right under at the bottom here. Uh, if you click on that, it will bring you to our list. Most recent ones at the top of the page. Um, so today's show, by the end of the day tomorrow at the latest, it should be ready as long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me. Um, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will receive an email from me letting you know when the recording is available. Um, we'll have a link to uh, the YouTube video and the um, uh, Sarah's slides. As I said, I've got her slides here. Um, the link to the video that she showed is in the slides. So you will all have access to all of that um, when it comes up on here. Um, if you do want to um, search our archives for any other shows or any topics, anything you um, might want to know if we did a show on, we have a search feature here. You can search the full show archives or just the most recent 12 months. Uh, if you want something just very current that is because this has our full show archives going back to um 2009 when encompass live premiered first premiered so we are in our uh 15th year of encompass live wow <laughs> i have no idea when i started this it, it goes so long but we there's so many things to talk about with libraries always new and, and innovative and wonderful things coming out so our full show archives are here so do just pay attention if you're watching an old show and i'm not going to scroll all the way down um there is a original broadcast date on every single one of them so some of the shows will stay on the test of time still be good valid useful thing resources but some things will become old and outdated information may have changed drastically um resources or websites may no longer exist or work uh, people may work at 
totally different libraries or different places now. <laughs> so um, just pay attention to that original broadcast date if you do watch something older. Um, we do, for Encompass Live, we have a Facebook page that we push um, information out to, so you can keep an eye on there. There's a reminder to log into today's show. We do a little meet our speakers, and we do also let people let you know here when recordings are available. Here's the announcement from last week's. Um, we also push out to uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram, I believe, uh, with our hashtag EncompLive. A little abbreviation for the show. So if you like to use any of those um, social media um, places, you can do that there. Um, Amanda will be back with us on February 22nd. That's the last Wednesday in February uh, for whatever tech topic you have an idea for that. Um, hopefully we'll hear from, but that will be soon. <laughs> um, it is a good and, question. Yeah, we'll see. No rush, got a whole month. Um, and you can so you can register for any of our other upcoming shows here. Uh, one last thing I do want to mention, uh, it is the beginning of the year. So um, we host, as I mentioned, this is our weekly webinar series, Encompass Live. But also here at the Library Commission, we host the Big Talk from Small Libraries online conference. This is always held the last Friday in February. So it's on February 24th. Um, these are, um, all small libraries are our presenters. All our presenters are from libraries with an um, FTE or population served of 10,000 or less. Uh, the full schedule is available. Registration is available. You can sign up. So please do register, share, um, take a look at our schedule and our speakers. You can see the topics we have coming up um, this year. And um, you can register for the conference. So please do um, sign up for Big Talk from Small Libraries coming up at the end of February. Um, Big Talk also has a Facebook page and its own Twitter account as well that you can follow uh, what's going on there. There it is. Pat, oh my gosh. Of course. Ah, they updated our page. Okay. No problem. <laughs> anyway, we do meet the speaker things here on our page um, and announcements about what's going on um, when the schedule is available. So if you do want to, you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter for all of that um, info. So please do sign up for Encompass Slot or Big Talk. Uh, sign up for our upcoming Encompass Live shows. Next week, I'm talking about taxes. It's tax season. Um, uh, yeah, tax <laughs> aid, yeah, boo. but we have help. <laughs> tax aid Nebraska is going to be with us next week talking about um, how AARP is uh, has a tax aid program here in Nebraska that Yay. can help. Yeah, <laughs> do that. So please do sign up for that. So that'll wrap it up for today's show. Thank you everybody for being here. Um, thank you, um, Amanda and Sarah, and hopefully we'll see you all at a future episode of Encompass Live. Cool. Bye bye.